Good day, everyone. These are my recent acquisitions from the last two weeks. In my previous video, I discussed the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, issues 31, 34, and 36, with emphasis on the artwork by Michael Zuli, and the Puma Blues, also with artwork by Michael Zuli, issues 1 through 23, with a script by Stephen Murphy, who also wrote these turtle books. If you're interested, you can watch the previous video. But this is a series that I highly recommend, as well as these three issues of the Turtles. And in addition to these books, those books, I also got these. These 20 books I got for a dollar each. And they are the second volume of The Micronauts. And that's issue number one with a beautiful cover by Michael Golden. Volume one of The Micronauts was written by Bill Mantlo. And the early issues were drawn by Michael Golden. And it's a wonderful series. This series was drawn by Cuddy Jones. At least many of the issues were, if not all of them. And that's number one. Number two. If you like good science fiction, these are wonderful stories. Number three. Four. Five. Six. I think another golden cover. Seven. Eight. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Fifteen, and Baron Karza was the nemesis of the Micronauts. Sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, and twenty. I was introduced to this series when they have, when there was a miniseries that had the X-Men and the Micronauts. I was starting to read comics, and I was just fascinated by these little guys. It's um, it's another comic that's never been very popular with people, and I'm, I don't know why. But it's wonderfully imaginative. And I used to have some of these issues when I was younger, and I don't know what happened to them, so it was nice to find them again. And on a side note, um, this series of the Micronauts, Volume 2, they're trying to find a home. And they're just traveling through space and encountering all kinds of different beings and aliens in, in the universe. And it reminded me of this book here by Van Vogt. Those of you familiar with um, science fiction stories from, I guess, the golden age of science fiction, are familiar with Van Vogt. And this one, The Voyage of the Space Beagle, is an important book because this collection is of short stories from the 30s, the 40s, and the 50s, which were all put in together of the space beagle traveling through space and encountering um, strange creatures, 
and different planets and galaxies very unusual but it was influential when it came um, to two um, I guess the franchises that, that now exist for better or for worse uh, one of them was Alien and the other one was Gene Roddenberry well, it influenced Mr. Roddenberry who of course you all know is the creator of Star Trek and uh, so, and also Van Vault was one of Jack Kirby's, uh, was, was the writer that Jack Kirby had read. And it would be interesting to see a video one day of someone who's familiar with Mr. Kirby, much better than I am, discussing the science fiction writers that he read when he was a kid or a teenager or even a young man. And in an interview that I saw with Kirby, he did mention Van Vault as well as a Simic, Heinlein, and Ray Bradbury. And also when I was a kid, I had picked up this copy of Erie Magazine. And before I knew who Van Vogt was, uh, this one adapted the Space Beagle. And when I saw it, I thought it was just a ripoff of Alien. And the way I guess it's drawn, it kind of is, but in the Van Vogt story, the Alien is very similar to it. Like, it's, it's more like a centipede. But I like this issue a lot of Erie. I would reread it over and over again. And it is Erie number 139. The other books that I got were the Defenders. These I got for ten dollars. Issue uh, forty-seven. They're not in order, obviously. Forty-six, Fifty six, fifty nine, sixty two, sixty three, sixty five, sixty six, and um, sixty seven. I only read some Defenders when I was younger, but um, they always remained with me because they were just rather unusual heroes, from Duck Strange to Silver Surfer, the Hulk. It was just an unusual team-up. The Avengers never appealed to me. They seemed, I don't know, a little bit too straight-laced. But these issues that I showed you, many of them are drawn by Keith Geffen, whom I became acquainted with when I started to read the Legion of Superheroes. But when I saw this, I'm thinking, oh, it's Kirby. But it's not Kirby, it's Keith Geffen, but it's inked by an inker that worked with Kirby, uh, Mike Royer. So it's interesting that Royer's inks have a very Kirby-esque feel to them. Or maybe Kirby has a very Royer feel to them, I don't know. If I'm correct, Royer worked with Kirby a lot in the Fourth World series, such as New Gods and Mr. Miracle and the other DC work that Kirby did, like Demon. In any event, it doesn't, this is uh, early Keith Geffen, an artist I like very much in The Legion of Superheroes. So, I got these books, and then I got these magazines. And these are from the late 60s, I think 66 to 69. And it's a magazine of fantasy and science fiction. 
I got each one of these, I think, for a quarter. This one has an Asimov story. And it's from a December. But I guess I have to look inside for the year. Sixty-nine, but I'll just show you the covers. This one has an Larry Niven and Isaac Nav, another Asimov story. For those of you familiar with I Am Robot, um, but Asimov just wrote everything, literally. He wrote just about everything. This one has Bradbury, Sturgeon, Philip Dick, Brian Aldiss. Robert Blotch, and if I'm correct, Bob Blotch was the creator of uh, Psycho. And Harlan Ellison, writer I like very much. This one has Asimov, Herbert, Ellison, Sturgeon, and Edmondson. This one has Asimov, Galar, and Niven. And Arthur C. Clarke, who wrote The Sentinel, which was made in 2001 in Space Odyssey. Harlan Ellison. For Vampirella fans, Ron Goulart wrote some novels, uh, paperbacks, which adapt the Vampirella stories. Again, Ron Goulart, who also wrote really wonderfully weird robot stories. One day I'll have to show you those books. I have a whole bunch of them. More Ron Goulart. And at Asimov. Asimov, I guess, is many of these issues. Uh, Judith Merrill, wonderful writer. Harden Ellison again. And Fritz Lieber, also a standard for this time. Dean Kuntz, Fritz Lieber. And you all know Harry Harrison because his novel Make Room was made into Soylent Green. Another one, Prince Lieber. Story. This one I found interesting because it has a review of 2001 A Space Odyssey by two writers, but the writer I'm interested in is Samuel Delaney. Another issue. This one has Asimov, Howard Fast, again Ron Gillard, Robert Silverberg. This one has an Asimov story. Then we get to Galaxy Science Fiction, a story by Kurt Wainer Smith. Look up Kurt Wainer Smith if you if if you're predisposed. He was a very interesting man. He's not as well known as the other science fiction writers, but his stories are remarkable, as is his personal life. Court Wainer Smith. It has something to do with North Korea. Another Asimov stories in here as well. Asimov again is in the story. And finally, the last one, Paul Anderson story, among others. So, continue. I was finally glad to get nice copies of these books. Mobius. This is the the epic story, the epic series, which reprinted the Mobius, um, the main Mobius works. And this is Mobius Volume Three, Airtight Garage. Mobius Five, The Gardens of Adina. And number six. Uh, I think how you say this is Faragonesia. Now, the thing about these stories, I mean, about these editions here, as you can see, they're, they have editor wonderful, good editorials, 
and also Mobius comments on his work. And it puts the stories in context and also the inspiration for them. And in that sense, they're just excellent. The Airtight Garage is, I think, the priciest of the group. I think Volume 1 is maybe second. I could be wrong about that, but if you ever see these under $30, I would just buy them. The airtight garage. This one's a wonderful story. It's almost like a Garden of Eden story, and um, it's 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 a beautiful. Actually, it's a very beautiful story. What Mobius is able to do is not just his artwork, which maybe appears a little bit simple, but it's his dialogue and his and what what the words that he uses are important. He does not waste words. There's no. Um, he doesn't really waste time with the reader. Everything seems to have a purpose. From number six, I remember seeing this in Heavy Metal Magazine, the man falling and falling and falling, and will he ever have an end for, for his fall? And he does, and he lands, and it's an atomic bomb. Got these for a very good price. I was very fortunate. I did not pay very much for these books. But again, I got lucky. Now, this is called Inside Mobius. It's a hardback, as you can see. And what it is, it's, uh, it's Mobius. It's like a little, I want to say a memoir, but... It's, Mem it's Mobius meeting up with all his creations. And delving into the creative process. He almost like Larry, Larry David, the co-creator of the Seinfeld series. Now, it says it's inside Mobius. However, the text is in Spanish. And there's another inside Mobius where the text is in French. And as far as I know, there is no inside Mobius in English. And I don't know why it's both the French and the Spanish edition, says Volume 3, are titled in English, but they all are. So if you can read Spanish or French, and you like Mobius, or if you just want it for the artwork, now it's not as it's not really not as nice as the other books that I showed you, but this is stuff that he did um, a few years before he died. But it is fascinating. You cannot go wrong with Mobius. Now we get to these guys, which I also got last week. And it's the Strangers in Paradise. I got these for $20, all of them. 
Been reading Rachel Rising, and I've been interested in Terry Moore. In the early 90s, I basically didn't read, actually, I didn't read many comics. And this is when um, Moore was doing his book. And if I'm correct, he lived in Houston, which is where, at that time, I was living in Houston, Houston, Texas. And it would have been interesting to read this at that time, but again, I wasn't reading comics, so I didn't know anything about this. But it's reading Rachel Rising recently, and I began to, well, Terry Moore, and, and this is what he's known for. And so I picked up these, this is volume three. Part 2 of Volume 3. Get a nice little hardback. And Part 4 of Volume 3. But what starts off the series is this one doesn't have a jacket, which is Volume 1, that started out the story. And the story is basically a friendship between Francine and Ketu. Francine's the brunette, and Ketu is the blonde. The stories are in black and white. And if people have told you that, that this is a romance story or something that's for women exclusively, um, and or a mystery, or something rather liked, or whatever, well, they're wrong if they say that this is exclusively that. There are elements of romance, mystery, suspense, thriller, drama, comedy in the story. And but it's much more than that. It's it's a rather remarkable little 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 storyline. Um Kachu, um, her friend, has an interesting background. And there's something in the story that develops, which is Kachu is, um, when she leaves um, her hometown and goes out on her own, she ends up well, the story becomes rather dark, and it has something to do with Ketu. And I don't want to give it away, and, um, but let's just say regarding Terry Moore that in an interview that I saw with him is where he got the idea for the story, and all he said was, well, I have an idea of a woman whose boyfriend has an affair, and she has a nervous breakdown, and she ends up taking off her clothes in the park and um, and that's the image he had in his head and so he decided to do a story where well what led to this and what happened afterwards and the woman was Francine and that's Francine right there Or, or yeah, Francine and her wild friend Ketu. And the result was Strangers in Paradise. So um, I read volume one, and since I didn't have the volume in between these, by chance I came across these. Oh. <sighs> so I got these for 30 bucks, and it is the omnibus. Of Strangers in Paradise. Yes, it's rather it's rather big. It's volume one and two. They are in paperback. They have the entire story. As you can see, it's rather heavy. Um, 
then they came oops, in this box. Now, um, I was told the box was damaged and it was sealed, but the, but the box is rather flimsy, as you can see. And these books weigh a lot, so I. If you order this or you see this, just be very careful because the books are going to just squeeze out of this. But I highly recommend Strangers of the Paradise. You will not be disappointed with this story. And the last book that I got a couple of days ago was this here. It's uh, Bruce Lee, The Legend of Bruce Lee, issue number one which is a reprint of some new newspaper strip that was published in LA in the early 80s. I saw it at one of my local comic shops and I said, what is that? And they said, well, we, they didn't know that much about it either. And so I just took it and show it to you here. There he is, Mr. Lee. Back. Paper's very thin. It's 1982. And the people who did it are Devono and Matera. Their first names are. Um, doesn't say. And it seems to be just Bruce Lee making a movie, but then getting caught up in adventures. Real life adventures, I guess. I don't know anything about this. But it looked interesting. And so I got it. And I think I, if I recall correctly, in order to the dragon, I saw it at the drive-in when I was very little. So these are the books for the last two weeks. Thanks for viewing. And happy reading.